Now this, my friends, is the Oppo A53. It's one of the cheapest Oppo smartphones of 2020 at just 169 quid, costing roughly the same as the Motorola Moto G9 Play and the Realme 7. And like those handsets, it's probably not going to win any awards for best phone of the year, but what it does do is deliver some solid specs for a price under 200 quid, which you really can't quibble with if money is a bit tight. You can grab your very own Oppo A53 direct from Oppo and from the likes of Amazon here in the UK right now. So let's whip it on out the box, take you on a full tour of the hardware and the software. And for more on the latest greatest set, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. And before I even open the box, I just got to point out, I love the way that Oppo and Realme and all the other Chinese manufacturers are trolling the hell out of Huawei with this easy access to the Google apps you use most sticker, which now seems to be appearing on all of their smartphones. Like a big old screw you guys, we haven't been banned yet. So there is the Oppo A53, let's just chuck that aside, see what else is bunged in here. So you've got our old friend Mr. Porky Pin device. You've got your condom case to chuck on there and protect the Oppo A53 from life dangers. You've got your power supply unit, your USB Type-C charging cable, and you've even got a basic pair of hard shell earphones bunged in the box as well. And the great news is that they've actually got a 3.5mm connection because yes, you do actually have a headphone jack on the Oppo A53. Halla frickin' Luya. So there in the flesh is the Oppo A53, and certainly it's not going to win any awards for originality of design or anything like that, but so far, I'm quite liking it. This is the electric black model, although you can also pick up the Oppo A53 in mint cream, uh, which is the version that I actually expected because that's the colour on the box. And mint cream sounds kind of disgusting, it basically sounds like the kind of confectionery your nan would stuff into your pockets whenever you went round to her house or whatever, uh, but it's kind of hard to tell what it really looks like without seeing it in the flesh, to be fair. Now, Apparently the design here is inspired by the shining translucent glimmer of ocean waves. That's Oppo's own words, not mine. And what that basically means is it throws off the same psychedelic kind of light patterns that we've seen in quite a lot of budget smartphones from the likes of Oppo and Realme. And you know what? For a £169 smartphone, it looks decidedly smart. And it is just a plastic finish around back like basically all of the rivals around this price point. But I believe you get a bit of Gorilla Glass 3 action up front. They do actually get a pre-installed screen protector on the Oppo A53 as well just to keep it in good nick for that little bit longer. Now of course you've got your re-mounted fingerprint sensor as well but besides that not much else to report on the design front. Got a, a respectable heft at around 186 grams without feeling too cumbersome. Uh, nice rounded corners for a comfortable grip but of course it is a 6.5 inch beast like pretty much every other smartphone released in 2020 so if you're looking for something compact bums. So anyway hopefully we've got some power in there already we can get it all set up. Yes you beauty. And just gonna quickly jab open that that sim tray as well, see what we're working with there. Uh, 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 uh. And the good news is you've got a dual SIM setup. You've also got a separate tray entirely for the micro SD memory card if you want to expand the onboard 64 gigs of storage. And that'll support cards of up to 256 gigs in size. So you should have plenty of space for all your files, media, and what have you. All right, so I've spent a bit of time with the Oppo A53, and so far, no real surprises, to be perfectly honest. It's your typical sort of budget phone uh, experience that you would find on the likes of a Realme or an Oppo smartphone. And that's because what you get here is Android 10. It's not the fresh new Android 11, unfortunately, but very few smartphones actually rock that latest version just yet. And of course, slathered on top of that is Color OS, but it is again version 7.2, not the latest Color OS 11, which I only just reviewed. But hopefully Android 11 and Color OS version 11 will be coming to the Oppo A53 soon. It just helps to organize the settings menu a bit more neatly and adds a few extra bonus features, which are well worth checking out. But as it is, Color OS is uh, perfectly customizable. Dive on into the settings, you can play around with all kinds of different options. Uh, you've got themes, you can set different kinds of wallpaper, including, of course, good old live wallpapers, like this wee effort here. Just like being back in a pub in the 1980s. But of course, as a bit of an anime geek, I will be adding my own wallpaper on there instead. And thankfully, even with the older Color West 7, you can get a fairly stock Android look and feel if you want. You get your apps tree on the go, you can get your Google Discover feed, you can pull down that uh, notifications bar from anywhere on the screen. You've got your dual band Wi-Fi support on there as well, and you've also got a good bit of NFC, which supports, as you can see there, Google Play. So that's great to see from a budget blower. But anyway, as I say, if you want a closer look at some of those ColorOS features, I've done a full tips and tricks guide for ColorOS 7 as well as the latest version 11 as well, so go check those out. And absolutely bugger all complaints with that re-mounted fingerprint sensor as well. Seems to absolutely do the job perfectly fine. Just tap your digit 
and you are basically straight in there as well. No hanging around, no waiting about. Boop, straight in. And you've also got a nice dependable bit of face recognition as well. So it seems to be dependable so far. Just tap that power button. And as you can see, you barely even see the lock screen. It's so swift. And you've also got a bit of raise to wake action as well. So just pick up the phone and again, straight in there. Now the display itself, again, pretty standard for a budget blower. It's a perfectly flat 6.5 inch IPS panel. It's not a full HD plus resolution, unfortunately. It's 1600 by 720, so standard HD. If you want a bit of full HD, then check out the Realme 7 instead. But the good news is that if you dive into something like Netflix, you'll see that you've got full HD streaming support in there. All the wide vines definitely in order. And it's a perfectly fine uh, bit of budget IPS fare. Uh, fairly natural looking colors. Uh, a little bit on the warm side, you can dive into the display settings and you kind of have a, a little tweak of the color temperature if you want something a little bit cooler. And the good news is that like most budget friendly smartphones, the Oppo A53 does have a variable refresh rate as well. You can have it at standard 60 hertz if you like, otherwise you can bump it all the way up to 90 hertz, or you can have it on auto refresh rate, uh, which just bumps it up when required. So there you go, Apple, something to aspire to with your phones that cost about six, seven times as much. And quite surprisingly, you do actually get a stereo speaker output on here as well, which is found on very few sub 200 pound smartphones. Uh, the Poco X3 NFC was, I think it was the last uh, cheapy one I had that did a stereo speaker output. Though sadly, the stream bar is an EARC compatible, so you don't get to enjoy that glorious Dolby Atmos audio with another device. Okay, so on the top volume, the audio is a bit gritty and grainy and not fantastic. But I'll tell you what, that top speaker does actually pull its weight fairly well. If so just bump up the volume again and then cover the bottom speaker, you'll see. Uh, Roku TV probably earns quite a bit of money from the likes of Rakuten to get that button on there. So as you can see, there's still pretty good clarity as well for a budget smartphone, at least even when that bottom uh, speaker is muffled up. As I mentioned before, you do get a headphone jack on there as well, like most other budget friendly smartphones. And you've got a good bit of Bluetooth 5.0 on here as well for your wireless connections. And that's got full LDAC support as well. So hopefully decent quality audio. So I've hooked the Oppo A53 up to my uh, Soundcore Life Q30s. Let's just uh, stick on the AAC support and jam to a bit of the new like Moths to Flames album. Yeah, sounding pretty bloody good to me. Now let's budge on to performance and what you got shoved inside the Oppo A53 is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 460 chipset, something that you don't encounter very often in the wild, that's for sure. And as you can see from these Geekbench results, it is fairly basic performance, but it's definitely a step up compared to a lot of the 400 series uh, chipsets. And the major advantage here is that you actually get the same Adreno 610 GPU packed in there as the Snapdragon 665. What that means is you should be able to play games like Call of Duty, PUBG Mobile, all that kind of stuff on low detail settings, admittedly, but with a nice smooth frame rate, so they will be perfectly playable. Especially as you get four gigs of RAM in there, which generally means that it'll handle a life absolutely fine and apps seem to load up sort of fairly fast as well as you can see not too much of a, uh, a weight so yeah for your everyday shenanigans and if you just want something to uh, play a, I see a light bit of game and here and there on and everything should do the job absolutely fine as for the battery life well oppo smartphones rarely disappoint in that area and the a53 packs in a 5000 milliamp cell which is actually pretty standard amongst these uh, budget friendly smartphones and you've got the usual power saver mode super power saver mode and all the other shenanigans uh, that you can play around with too and the oppo a53 supports 18 watt fast ish kind of charging as well again fairly sort of standard for phones at this sort of price point now let's finish up with the gander at that there triple lens rear camera and what you've got here is a 13 megapixel primary lens backed by a simple 2 megapixel macro lens and 2 megapixel depth sensor and it's basically going to be your standard budget oppo camera experience so it should be absolutely fine as long as the conditions are pretty good but as soon as things start to get a little bit dingy it will be a bit more of a struggle especially as you don't appear to have a dedicated night mode on here as well you can zoom in uh, if you want to uh, like so but again that's only really recommended in very bright conditions and i'm guessing by the time you get to the five times level even in daylight it's gonna offer up quite grainy results anyway and certainly in this fairly uh, dim studio we've already got quite grainy uh, results there so yeah so certainly in the low light conditions it's going to be a bit of a struggle but at least you do get an hdr mode uh, for if you've got a high contrast shot you're trying to shoot against a bright sky or something but yeah no ultra wide angle uh, lens here and no telephoto lens either so it's a bit limited as far as the flexibility goes you do just of course have that macro lens and if you dive on into the more camera features you'll find the macro mode in there so you can get a bit of an extreme close up and then of course there's also a portrait mode making full use of that two megapixel depth sensor just to keep your subject 
nice and crisp and just blur out everything behind them. And if we jump on into the video settings as well, you can shoot up to full HD resolution video, which is the default setting. There's no 4K option, sadly. And then if we just flip around to that front facing camera, it's an 8 megapixel, a megapixel selfie snapper. Uh, so hopefully it should be all right just for simple shareable shots. Although again, I wouldn't exactly expect the moon on a stick with this thing. Uh, probably again, gonna struggle quite badly in low light. Ugh, can you tell it's been a bit of a long week? So that right there in a nutshell is the Oppo A53, a budget friendly smartphone, one of the cheapest Oppos around right now and fairly strong competition for the likes of the Realme 7. Of course, you've got the uh, the 90 Hertz refresh rate, nice little IPS panel on it. You've got a 5,000 milliamp battery, should last you a day or two between charges, no worries whatsoever. Hopefully respectable performance for your games and everything, thanks to that Adreno 610 that's packed in there. And good old ColorOS is just as charming as ever, if also slightly messy in places. So that's what this baldy northerner thinks anyway, but what do you think? If you've actually been using the Oppo A53, definitely please leave your own mini review down in the comments below. It'd be great to hear your own thoughts and experience and for more than the latest greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. It would make me your best friend forever. See ya, bye!